Come on guys, the rocket's not that long. And then the rocket's like... Very quickly before this video starts, I just realised I messed up. I thought I was recording with my actual mic, but apparently not, so if the audio sounds like ass, then that's why. I've done my best to clean it up in post-production, so hopefully it sounds alright for you all, but yeah. It might not be perfect. Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Lynx. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, where today I'm sending a pretty big rover to one of the planets. Where am I going exactly? I'm going to Hydrus. Uh, <laughs> the rover's almost as long as the rocket, which is, uh, uh, I don't know what to make it. Make of that whatever you will, but I hope you're all doing well. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it may be, wherever you are, make sure you're washing your hands. All right, let's throttle down. Oh, this is a bad launch. This is awful. What am I doing? <laughs> I, I said in the last video, you can tell when your ship's going to tip, and mine certainly is doing exactly that. What is my inclination going to be? That is... That's not so good. Anyway, welcome back. I'm sending a very big rover. If you just check inside this fairing here, very nice. It's got communications, it's got mining gear, it's got the lot, it's got the, the whole shebang, as they might say. This is going to Hydrus, it's going to be very nice. We're going to hopefully land in some floating island biomes, which means we'll be able to actually explore the floating islands, take samples from them and stuff like that. Not right off the bat, at the moment we've got the rover. I want to build a base there as well, so I need the ground facilities, I need the rover, I need the plane, I need all that sort of good stuff. But anyway, we shall send this to Hydras and we'll see how it does. So you might be wondering, yeah, this looks like a pretty heavy fairy. Well, it's not actually too bad. It's it's 22 tons, I believe. Now, it does have very minimal fuel. It's got a little bit of fuel. It doesn't have like a massive amount, but it's also got some ore tanks and it's got some mining stuff. So over a long period of time, it will have a lot of fuel. You know what? We'll, we'll reveal the fairy, shall we? Boop. Okay, good, it didn't self-destruct. <laughs> All right, so here's the rover. So at the front, we've just got like a fancy little nose and then we've got, we've got the ore processing, stuff like that. And then we've got the fuel tanks a little bit further behind, a little cargo bay with all of the science in. And then finally, right at the back, we've got the actual science module, whatever, whatever it is. The, what is it actually called? Yeah, planetary laboratory. That's what, that's what they, that's what the cool kids call it, the planetary laboratory. Now, I don't think I'm going to be able to actually get an encounter with Hydras, but I, I can, it, it's because the inkling is off, so if I correct the inclination, I should be able to actually meet it, hopefully. And we're now on our way. Currently doing the manoeuvre. Quite a hefty manoeuvre to get down to Hydra, so I've still got to do that inclination change that I mentioned earlier, but that should all be fine, cool and good. I've got another stage up here with a little poodle engine. That should be uh, the engine that I do whilst going around Hydra and all that. Uh, I don't know how much of it I'm going to actually use because I've got parachutes on the rover, and I'm also a little bit of an idiot. I, uh, yeah, um... <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit of a symmetry problem, but <laughs> it's a little bit late now, isn't it? <laughs> it's fine, like, two of them, good enough, because these, I've tested it with two of them, because I forgot to actually uh, change it in the editor, but I did try it with two, and it works fine with two, so I'm just going to use two, which just looks a little bit ugly, and I feel like such an idiot for doing that. I still have a connection to road from all the way over here, that is sweet. Oh, that is actually so cool, because then I can use probes, yes. Unmanned space travel time. All right, so I'll be getting an impact with Hydron. No, it'll be fine. I'll warp until then, and I'll, I'll correct it a bit later. I'll be getting an impact with Hydron, which will send me into a 45 kilometer periapsis. And uh, I think I'll do my slowing down there, and I might just land directly. But I need to pick a landing site as well. There are places that I want to go. Also, I've got this curb all the way out here from the Skiff 4 challenge that I never actually saved. <laughs> might pick them up along the way and take them down to the base because there's one extra slot. If I am going to rescue this person, I I need to flip my orbit around the planet. And there we go. Orbit flipped. I don't know whether this is gonna... Why is that pushing me out as well? Oh, that is awful. You know, I have fuel to spare. I'll be all right. I still have the signal all the way back to road. That is incredible. I didn't realize these relays could reach that far. 70% of the signal. That's still really good. So I can have like over double that. That's incredible. And we have arrived at Hydrus. There it is. There's the planet. And I believe it's also time to do the maneuver in a minute. So this is actually going to take us into the next stage, the transfer stage, which I was expecting to already be using. But nevertheless, I suppose we're going to be using that a bit later than expected. And the thing is, this would look so cool if I didn't mess up the solar panels and have them placed asymmetrically. Oh man, I feel like such an idiot for doing that. And look at that. Look at the, the planet shine. Yes. <laughs> the actual craft now lights up the correct colour. I feel like I've been underappreciative of how good planet shine actually is, because I've never used it. I mean, I've only just started writing conflicts for it for Beyond Home, which I'm sure for those of you who are playing it, you'll probably be very excited. I mean, for this part, which is 
using the shiny part is not working as well, but for the other parts, it's working brilliantly. I mean, look at that. That's so cool. It's lit up from two directions, and <laughs> as soon as I saw that, I was like, whoa. <laughs> In all of my, what, five years playing Kerbal Space Program, I've never used Planet Shine very well, so. Here we are. I'm fine for fuel as well. I've got another stage here. So to match velocities, I might have to do quite a hefty burn, but I've got another engine on here. And obviously I've got the drills as well. And I don't need the engine on the actual rover to actually do anything because I'm going to be landing it <laughs> with parachutes. That rendezvous is going to cost us 382 meters per second, which is more fuel than I bargained for, I'll be honest. Look at that. We're just above Hydrus. Its surface is barely visible. All we can really see are its really cool, crisp looking clouds. Anyway, I I'm um, within not point uh, I'm within one meter per second of the target. All I gotta do is wait to meet it, and then I can just get one Kerbal out and it'll be fine. Alright, here it is. This is the target with what looks like no fuel left. <laughs> Where the hell has my rover gone? Goodbye, ship that's been orbiting Hydrus for a very long time. And hello, rover. Now, the rover's currently going away from me because they didn't properly match the, the orbital velocities, but we're all right. I mean, it, we could just do it on RCS, but now I've got another surprise crew member. Now, I'm not... Are they... Oh, they're a pilot. I've already got two pilots on board this. I've got two pilots, an engineer, and a scientist. I, I don't think I actually mentioned that earlier on. But yeah, the engineers, in case the, <laughs> the wheels break, the scientist is obviously for doing science and the bonuses that I get from Hydrus. And the pilots are because I don't know how to fly spacecraft. Right, which module doesn't actually have people in? This one has two people in, I believe. There we are. And we're on board. And now it's time to descend to the surface of Hydrus. Now then, for a landing spot, I think I'm going to pick somewhere over here. Now, I can't really... If I, if I do this, I can cheat a little bit. And no, there's no ocean there. It'll be fine. And that's where I'm going to land. But I'm going to quick save because I'm not sure whether it is or not. Oh, I think I should probably retract the solar panels before I do that. And I should probably deploy my parachutes. I hope we're landing near some floating islands. If not, I'm going to be a bit disappointed. Now, and I'll have a massive journey ahead of me, but that's looking promising. As long as I don't land on a, a mountain, I'll be alright. <laughs> now, it's time for re-entry, so I'm not sure how this is going to go, you know? I don't know. I'm going pretty slow, and it's slowing me down already without any sort of heating effects. I don't think these antenna can actually blow off, fingers crossed. I'll be really mad if they do. <laughs> but I'm slowing down so much already. Oh, I'm going to be landing near some ocean, though. So, well, some ocean. <laughs> A lake. <laughs> That's hardly an ocean. What is this, an ocean for ants? Oh, I've already slowed down to below 300 meters per second, so it looks like I'm going to be landing in water, or at the very most, this little bit of land here. No, I'm definitely landing in water at this rate. <laughs> I can use the engine to keep me going a little bit. Yeah, screw it, I'm using the engine. Ain't landing in water, no thank you. No bueno. It does not want to turn though. I don't think I've balanced parachutes with the center of mass. <gasps> Floating islands! Yes! If I send a plane here, it'll be fine. I just need to get some propellers and I'll, everything will be fine. Everything will be cool. It's going to get real foggy though. Oh, there's even some big floating islands. Yeah, to be honest, can't see shit now. <laughs> it's all gone. Now then, the real question is, am I going to break all my wheels when landing? Are my parachutes going to do a good enough job? And are they actually going to stop me from landing face first? I, like, I have this pointy spike on the front for a reason and that's in case this happens. Uh, I just really hope... Okay, they're all deploying now at least. That's looking real good. I think I can actually control it a little bit better. Okay, if I landed like that, that's not too much of an issue. Yeah, you know what? We're landing on a slope as well. That's probably a good angle. And I still have a connection to road, I believe. Yes, I do. <laughs> I didn't realise these relays could actually reach all the way back to the home planet from here, but wow, that's neat. I can transmit all my science. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to have to send something that would pick all my Kerbals up from Hydras, but no, it looks like I can just do that. But what an environment. I mean, look at that. Like, you can see the floating islands in the background there. I'm just coming down, about to land here. Probably coming to a quite a sudden stop, mind you. Right, at all. Oh, yes. Yes, there we go. We'll get the angle just right. Hope for the best. And... Boop! <laughs> Rover landed. All right, now I want to get off this hill, though. I want to go down to that water. You know, we're going to do a little bit of science once we're here. Oh, that's a little bit of a cliff, though. You know what? Go on. <laughs> Let's put it through its paces, at least. And we're off. We're on a journey. We're going on an adventure. Let's open this up. Let's do some science. Seismic data, 50 science. Process that in the lab, 69 data stored. I'm going a little bit speedy for my liking. However, I'm getting down to the sea level. Look at that, though. That looks like an actual proper alien world. I'm really happy with how Hydrus has turned out. I really am. And there we go. We survived the hill, <laughs> surprisingly. Here we are. Six science a day. Are you kidding me? That is brilliant. <laughs> 
I'm just going to get closer and closer and just continue rolling down to the ocean, well, the lake, because hardly an ocean, isn't it? <laughs> and there we are. So, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. If you liked that, please do remember to leave the like and subscribe button, because these episodes take a lot of effort to make. If you want to see anything else, there's the Doom Eternal playlist, which I'll link uh, probably at the end, because I probably ran out of time to actually put a card at the top right. So, at the end of the video, you'll be able to see uh, a link to that. But, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next episode.